Today I'm going to take you through my final thoughts on the Amazon Echo Show 10 third gen. But what I'm really excited for is to share with you my theory on the secret reason Amazon have made this device and why I think it has huge implications on all of the Echo devices in the future. Welcome back to another episode of Steve's Reviews. This is the first version of what I think is Amazon's first home robot and it is slightly unnerving as I experienced in my unboxing episode of the Echo Show 10 that I did earlier on this week and you can check that out at the links below. But before I tell you what I now think of it after having used it for the past week, let's take a look at the specs. We have this idea that one day machines will rise from the ashes of a nuclear fire and wage war to exterminate all mankind. It's a slow start, but I believe that war is here, in our present, tonight. And it starts with the Amazon Echo Show 10. Sporting a pretty massive 10 inch display, which is essentially bootstrapped to a speaker, this thing looks both mental and futuristic. Close up, the screen isn't particularly sharp at 800p, but appears ample enough for viewing from further away. On the top of the screen are typical simplistic echo controls, and the sound from the speaker comes from dual 1-inch front-firing tweeters and a large 3-inch woofer, and Amazon is touting the sound as premium. This is covered by the typical speaker material that all echo devices are covered in. It's worth giving Amazon a clap here because they've used 100% post-consumer recycled fabric. The party trick, however, is the whole thing moves, using a 13 megapixel camera and AI on the combination MediaTek and Amazon AZ1 processors to hunt you down as you run for your life. So let's go through some of the main selling points of this device. Now, the first thing is evidently as a speaker. Now, I won't do another sound test today because I did one of those in the unboxing and I know a lot of you will have already seen that. But overall, I thought the sound was exceptional for what this device is. By far, it's the best Amazon Echo Show device for sound that they've made so far. And obviously it's a good reason for it because that is a big speaker on the back. It's not built into sort of the screen like the other Echo Show devices are. It's also got a few other benefits with its form factor for the sound. Now it's got two front facing tweeters that fire out directly at you. Now the fact this can follow you wherever you are in the room it means that you're always going to get the same sound wherever you are in that room. It's not going to sound better in one corner than it will the other because this thing will literally follow you around giving you the best possible sound. Now that is one of the reasons why I think it has much better sound than any of the previous Echo shows that we've had. And you know what? I think it comes close to the Echo Studio. Of course, there is still a significant leap with the Echo Studio. The sound on that thing is just crazily good. But this certainly does an extremely good job at coming near to that. I would even say that it's a tad better than the staple Echo 4th Gen. Genuinely, I think this speaker is so good that it actually surprised me of how good this thing is. And that surprise definitely comes, like I said, from that form factor, the fact you have this amazing speaker on the back stapled to this sort of turtleneck head that's poking out with a gigantic screen on the top. I mean, it definitely looks like it's taken design cues from certain products we've seen in the past, but also it kind of looks quite futuristic as well. I genuinely actually really like the design. I think it's going to be a bit controversial. and I know some of you out there will think it looks ridiculous. I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments. Do you like the look of it? Do you not like the look of it? I will say though, although I do like the design of it, it's a little bit of a sore thumb. I mean, there is nowhere in my house that I've managed to put this and sort of gone, hmm, yes, that looks right there. It doesn't seem to go anywhere in this house. That might be because I have a more rustic and oldie worldy aesthetic everywhere, but that could also be the fact that this really does look super futuristic. And only those with futuristic houses may get away with this. Potentially the black version might go a little bit better and look a little bit less stand out against everything else. But certainly the white version 
doesn't do itself any favours if it's trying to blend in. The interface itself is pretty much the exact same as all the other Echo Show devices that have been and gone already, but for the benefit of those that haven't used it, it's pretty straightforward. You can swipe to access a few other things such as the news or control of your smart home, but that's pretty much it. These devices are more kind of informative than interactive. You're not supposed to use this as a tablet, for example. But overall, I felt that it's a little bit snappier than in the past. Potentially, that's because of the AZ1 chip inside here, which is supposed to make things a bit snappier. It's also supposed to make Alexa a bit snappier as well. However, and this is a big however, the AZ1 chip is not activated in the UK for use with the Amazon Echo voice service. And that means I haven't been able to test out whether or not this thing actually is snappier at responding to my requests. But the AZ1 chip is supposed to be able to do a lot more on device instead of sending the requests to the Amazon server to come back to then activate. So I'm really looking forward to the AZ1 being properly initiated in this country. I mean, they're in the devices. So all they have to do is flick a switch. Just press the switch, please. But the fact they've included that AZ1 chip fits into my theory at the very end, so stick with me. Now, the last thing we need to talk about, really, is the robotic features of this device. Now, this, to me, is the main selling point of the Amazon Echo Show 10 third generation, because this is the thing that hasn't been in any Amazon device that I've seen so far. It works extremely well, in my opinion, and this isn't something I've experienced from this type of product category ever. I mean, I've seen this sort of thing in camera gimbals before where you can get your camera to follow you, but never in something that is actually displaying the screen to me. So this to me was a really unique and innovative product that I was just wowed at. Back in my unboxing, I just was disbelieving. I didn't really know what to say because it is a very surprising but interesting product indeed. But just because it works well some of the time does not mean it works well all of the time. It definitely isn't without its hiccups. First of all, all of the tracking is done via the camera in the top right of the screen. Now this uses an AI vision sort of service to track where you are. So it is relying on the quality of that camera and the positioning of that camera. There's been numerous times where I've woken her up and she's turned to face me, but she's sort of turned like that, sort of squinting at me, like that. I think that's probably because she is one-eyed and she can't quite grasp where I am. I don't know the reason definitely. It could be that where I spoke to her, there was a light behind me and she struggled to pick me out against that. I don't know. All I know is that occasionally it doesn't always turn exactly to you and is slightly off-centered. This may have been able to be fixed if that camera was in the center. Also, the camera being on the right-hand side really does trigger my OCD. I think it looks a bit strange. Now, being purely image AI, this also doesn't have any form of infrared or anything else. Now, that means that, one, you're not going to get any nighttime usage, so you can't essentially use this in dark environments, which means that if you are in a dark room and you do call her name, she's going to struggle to find you. For the most part, that's fine. I doubt people will be walking around in the dark to use this, but it's worth considering. What's quite interesting is that because this is a first-gen device, it does feel like Amazon is treating us as guinea pigs a little bit because when she turns to you and doesn't quite get where you are, she does in fact pop up with a message on the screen saying, did I move to you correctly? At which point you can offer the feedback and say, no, you didn't get it right next time. Now this is pretty good because it does mean that I'm training the AI to understand where people are in rooms and it will benefit everyone in the future. So I like that. Now it's also worth pointing out that the movement is completely silent. Alexa. Seriously, it's not audible at all and it's very, very smooth as well. Now this is particularly useful when you consider this can be used with Alexa Guard in the US. Now for those that don't know what Alexa Guard is, basically it's a system whereby which you can use your devices to detect when people are in the house. Now with the Echo Show 10, it can actually pan periodically around your rooms and if it catches someone on the camera when there's not supposed to be anyone there, it will alert you. 
Now this is awesome, however, this isn't available in the UK. Annoyingly, it was available for a couple of weeks over the summer and then got removed. So another thing, Amazon, just press the switch, come on. I mean, we speak English the same as they do in the US, mostly, but the Queen's English. What you can do, however, in the UK is drop into the device from your phone. Now, this is pretty cool, but I've got some criticisms with the way this works. It has this kind of really janky interface where it works almost like an elastic bend. You can click and drag, almost like a slingshot, and then let go, and the camera then moves to the location you've kind of clicked and dragged to. It's a bit bizarre. I really don't like the way that works. So Amazon, if you are watching, please put something like a simple joystick or some arrows on either side of the screen because this thing doesn't even tilt up and down. Automatically, that is. You can do that manually. So all you need is two arrows on either side of the screen to move it around. But that's also a little bit of a criticism. If this is angled slightly wrong, I mean, all you're going to be able to see is the roof. That's if you drop back in. Really, you have to make sure that it's angled down so you can see what's going on. Now, for those worried about their privacy, actually, this has a little thing on the top. You can flick that, and it disables the camera. Nobody can see out of that. So that's pretty good that that is included, because those concerned about privacy will be very appreciative of the ability to do that. But obviously, with that across, because, like I said, it uses AI to track you through the image, you are not going to be able to use that motion capability, which is a bit of a shame, but a sacrifice you'll need to make if you don't want that camera activated. Overall, from a robotic standpoint, I think this is a great start. I'm truly impressed with how good this actually is. And although I do talk about the occasions where it hasn't worked, for the most part, 95 to 98% of the time, this has worked seamlessly. And I've been very, very impressed. I do feel like they could have added a few other things to make this even more accurate. Something like an infrared sensor, for example, would have been very, very good for using it in low light environments because it wouldn't necessarily rely on the camera AI image to be able to find you. But it would also have had the benefit of being able to use as a security camera at night. So something like an infrared camera would have been invaluable. Maybe even something like a LiDAR sensor would be even more valuable at tracking you in the room. And I think in future we may well see Echo Show devices with the movement capabilities with those sensors built into them. But the thing is, Amazon obviously go for cheap over expensive when they're pricing their items or devices. You can see why this is the price it is, because it doesn't have the infrared sensors, it doesn't have a LiDAR sensor, and the bezels are the size of a single track lane. Seriously, they are disgusting. Because the price comes to £240. Like all Amazon devices, I think that is incredibly well priced, but they do often skimp out on features to keep that price low. So on one hand, that's great. On the other hand, would I have paid a little bit more for some more advanced features? Yeah, probably. I probably would have done. Echo Show 10 Pro. You heard it here first. Now that price is indeed considerably more expensive than the Echo Show 8 and even any of the Echo 4th gens. It's a lot more expensive, but it's not that much more expensive than the Echo Studio. The Echo Studio is about 180 quid, so you're looking about 50, 60 pounds more expensive. And I don't think that's a lot to ask for when you consider that this is coming with a gigantic screen. Yes, the sound isn't quite as good as the Echo Studio, but I do think it's better than any of the other Echo devices except the Studio. So for me, 240 quid, I think, is extremely reasonable for this brand new, futuristic, early thinking piece of technology. I mean, just look at it. It is... It's insane. It is utterly insane. And I love it. But the big question is, do I think this will be included in my home setup? Do I think this will be in my smart home permanently? And the answer is possibly a surprising no. Despite the fact that I absolutely love it and that I think it's really forward thinking and I think that this has some huge implication for what's next and we'll talk more about that in just a second. 
I still don't think that this fits a need for me that I have. If maybe it was a better security camera, it could work as night vision. It had Alexa Guard in the UK. We might be having a slightly different conversation right now, and I might indeed be saying that this will be finding a permanent place in my house. But the fact it doesn't have that, and the fact that I live in a relatively small house where the rooms can easily be captured by a one directional camera, I don't think I've got a need for this. If I had a bigger kitchen, again, I would probably find it really useful. And I think this is it. In certain use cases, this is going to be invaluable. Maybe you live in a big family house with a massive kitchen. You want to be able to move this around a kitchen like this so you can see grandma at all times when you're talking to her. Or you're in a workshop looking at tutorials and it's a big place and you've got it need you need this to follow you around. Or maybe you have lots of conferences and you want people to be in meetings with you 24-7 and follow you around to the toilet. Then this is ideal. But for me, I just don't see quite where it fits in my whole smart home setup. But that does not stop this from being what I think the future of all Echo devices will be. I was on a podcast recently, The Smart Home Collective, with another YouTuber, Mark, from Technology for Life. I'll leave his link in the description so you can check him out. But we spoke about smart home technology and innovation in this particular category. And this came up. And I said at the time that I thought this was quite an innovative product and something that we've never really seen in this particular category before. But I didn't actually realize how innovative this thing is and how much it implicates the future. Think about it. This device sits in your room and is essentially aware of your presence. It knows when you are there and it can follow you around the room and track you when you are doing things. Walking around it, walking past it, it will follow you. Okay, that in itself is pretty cool. All Amazon would have to do is flick another switch to make this thing aware of when you are looking at it. There are already devices out there that do this, that are aware of when you are looking or engaging with it. Now, what could this mean for Amazon devices? It could mean the end of a wake word. Let's face it, back in 2015, saying the word Alexa was all very well and good and quite a new concept, being able to control your entire house by saying this one word, Alexa. But who here is annoyed of saying the word Alexa? I am. I'm very bored of saying Alexa every time I want to do something in my house, turn the lights on, do this. And I touched on this very, very briefly in my Flick review of the smart buttons, that it's much quicker to press a button than it is to get her to do it. Now, admittedly, most people don't have buttons that can control multiple things at once. So let's say you want to go into a, a cinema relaxed mode and turn several lights down and maybe turn some ambient lighting behind the television on. A lot of people don't have one button to do that. The flick buttons obviously replace that function and allow you to do everything. But for the most people, they'd have to flick all the lights, different levels to do it, getting up. So using Alexa still is a quicker way. But you can't argue that it still takes time to say her name, wait for her to activate, then ask her to do things, wait for her to compute to do that, and then do that. You know, to get the whole thing done, it takes a while. Let's try this, shall we? See how long this takes. Alexa. Turn off studio. Okay. Imagine she is aware of your presence and aware of which way you're looking, it would mean that you would be able to turn to her and just say, turn on my studio, turn off my lights, open Netflix, open YouTube, watch Stu's reviews, subscribe to Stu's reviews. You wouldn't have to use a wake word. And I genuinely think this is possibly the start of the end of the wake word. Genuinely. I think this is it. You are looking at the future of what the Amazon Echo voice service will eventually become. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you not agree with me? Do you think this device spells the possible end of the wake word?
let me know in the comments below because I'm genuinely interested in what you think and whether or not you think I'm right. But other than that, guys, I think this sort of concludes my review. This thing is incredible. It's priced extremely well. It does some incredible features, possibly more in the US at this moment in time. It's so futuristic, but I think for the most part, a lot of people possibly won't have a need for it. But if you do like tech and you are interested in the future of all Amazon Echo devices, the Echo Show 10 third generation is not a device you need to skip on. And there we go. If you liked today's video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe, guys. And remember, hit that notification bell to be notified as soon as a new episode lands. But other than that, guys, thanks for joining me. And I'll see you back for another episode of Studio Reviews soon. It honestly, it is utterly, utterly crazy, this device. Crazy. Whoa.